In this video, we'll learn about server sent events. Server sent events allow servers to push real time updates to web clients. They can be used for live sports scores, stock market updates, and even do that cool thing ChatGDP does where it streams text in. This is Coding with Adam, and let's get to the code. We'll start by looking at how a typical HTTP request works. On the left hand side, we have our client. On the right hand side, we have our server. What typically happens when you want to ask for a resource like an HTML file, a JavaScript file, or make an API call is you'll open a connection on the server by making a GET request and the server will spawn back. Then you'll close that connection. And when you want to ask for your next resource, like an API call, you'll open a connection, make that request on the server and get a response back. And then that connection will close. Let's take a look at server sent events. As you can see, we open a connection from our client and we do a get request with an accept type of text event stream. The server will then respond with text event stream with transfer encoding chunk. That means we're going to be sending a little bits of information back to the client. As you can see with server sent events, communication is in one direction from the server to the client. Once the connection is open, the client can then just wait for responses back from the server and handle the data in real time. To better understand server sent events, let's code a simple example using Node Express and an HTML page. I'll be using VS Code. I've opened it to a blank directory called SSE Simple Example. We'll create two folders, one folder called server, another folder called client. We'll then open the integrated terminal to our server folder and we'll run npm init y. We'll install two dependencies, express and cores. We'll also install a dev dependency called nodemon. Next, we'll go ahead and we'll add an index.js file inside our server folder. We'll simply put a console log of test and then we'll jump to our package.json file where we'll do a couple of things. The first thing we're going to do is add a type of module so we can use ES6 imports. We'll then scroll to the bottom to confirm that we've installed our dependencies. Cores and express our dev dependencies we have nodemon. Below the test script, we're going to go ahead and add a new script called start. The start script is going to go ahead and use nodemon to start our application. And it's going to start it at index.js. What nodemon will do is anytime we make any changes to index.js and save, it'll restart our application. This will be perfect as we make changes to our server. We'll then go ahead and jump back to our terminal where we're going to run start. As you can see, the application is started and it's printed out test. If we go to our code over here and we make a modification, as test 123 and save it, we can see that the application restarted and we got our new console log. Let's start by adding our imports for Express and for Cores. Next, we'll go ahead and we'll create our Express app. Then we're going to call app.useCores. We'll go ahead and add a simple app.get. And all this is going to do is just respond with hello world. Lastly, we're going to go ahead and call app.listen. And we're going to listen on port 3009. You can use any port that you like to use. And what we'll do is we'll simply print out a log message. And that log message will let us know that the server is running on port 3009. And then see in the terminal after you save that it says the server is running on port 3009. I'll then pop open a Chrome tab over here and you can see that I've navigated to localhost 3009 and it's printed out hello world. We've confirmed that our express server is working now we can move on to learning server sent events. The server sent event that we're going to be setting up is to get the current time. We're going to use a get and our route will be slash current time. We'll take in our request and our response for the arrow function. For our response, we're going to be sending back three headers. The first header is the content type, which we'll be setting to text event stream. This informs the client that the content being sent is an event stream. The client then understands how to parse the incoming data as a stream of events rather than a static response. The second header we want to set is cache control. We want to set that to no cache. So the browser doesn't cache any information and continues to receive live information from the server. The third header that we want to set is the connection. We want to set that to keep alive. This informs the browser to keep the connection open. As you recall from our diagram, we open the connection here at the very beginning when we make our get request, and then we keep that connection open so that we can continue to receive responses from our server. After setting the headers, we're going to go ahead and flush the headers, which will send the headers back to the client. Let's go ahead and make sure that everything's working. Make sure that everything looks good in your terminal over here. It says server is running at port 3009 and there are no errors. We'll then open our developer tools by right clicking and clicking on inspect. 
Then I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the network tab. For the URL, we're going to put localhost 3009 current time. When we do that, if we look at our network tab, we'll see that there was a request made to current time. When we click on the response headers, we're gonna see that we got back the cache control is set to no cache, the connection is set to keep alive, and more importantly, the content type is set to text event stream. And you'll also notice another header called transfer encoding set to chunk. Typically, the server sends back a response size. However, when it doesn't know the size, it can send back transfer encoding chunk, which means you'll be getting multiple responses back from the server. While we're here, we can also click on this new tab that we see over here called event stream. This is where we're going to see our responses. Well, let's go ahead and send our very first message on our event stream. We're going to use our response and call the write method. At the beginning of every event stream message, we have to put data colon. We can then go ahead and put our message. We're going to put hello world. And at the end of every message, you need two new lines. To do that, we just put backslash n and backslash n. Now we can jump back to our browser. We'll refresh the page and you'll notice on the screen, it's going to say data, hello world. And if we go to our network tab and click on current time and then click on event stream, we're gonna see that we have a new message. The type of the message is message and the data is hello world. We could then go ahead and send another message. Instead of hello world, we're going to just simply send hi. We'll save it. Then we'll just refresh our browser and you'll click on current time. And we're going to see that we have two messages over here, hello world and hi. Now this is just a simple example. You typically wouldn't access this URL like this through the browser. Typically you use something in JavaScript called an event source. And we'll get to that next after we finish setting up our server. For our current time event stream, we're going to go ahead and and remove this text over here. And what we'd actually like to do is go ahead and send the time back. For this, we're going to use an interval and every one second, we're going to go ahead and send the time back. We're simply gonna send back response.write and we're going to supply it with the new time. We're going to give it the data format over here with a colon, then our data, and then two new lines at the end. Lastly, if the client closes the connection or the server closes the connection, we want to go ahead and clean up our interval. And we're going to do that by using the response dot on and we're going to listen for the close event and that will take in an arrow function. And then inside that arrow function, we're going to go ahead and call clear interval and we'll pass in the interval ID and we'll go ahead and we'll call response dot end. We can test this out by going to our browser, refreshing, you're gonna see the data streaming in. If we go to our network tab and click on current time, you'll see in the event stream tab, we also see that data streaming in every one second. As I mentioned for the event stream, you typically won't use it like this by just going to the URL. In JavaScript, you're going to use something called the event source. So let's go ahead and set up our client folder. We're gonna go ahead and create an index.html file. We'll also create an index.js file. We'll go to our index.html file and we'll quickly set it up by hitting exclamation and then tab. And then inside our head tag, after the title, we're going to go ahead and add our script tag. We're going to add defer so that it executes after our HTML has loaded. We're going to set the SRC to index.js. Then we'll just go ahead and close our script tag. We're going to add a little bit of styling for our application. We're just going to go set the body up and we're going to set the background color to black and the text to white. And then inside the body of the HTML, we're going to go ahead and add an H1. And we're going to give the H1 an ID of time. And we can simply put the text time inside the H1 as a placeholder. We'll then jump just to our index.js over here. I'm just going to put a console.log of hi so we can make sure everything is wired up correctly. To run the front end application, we're going to be using an extension called Live Server. So you can go to your extensions, search for Live Server find it and then click the install button. Once you have it, we can go back to our application, right click on the index.html and click open with live server. Once we do that, we'll see the HTML file open in our Chrome browser. You can see that it's printed time for H1. And if we go to our console and we load our console tab, we'll see that it says hi. Now that we know we're in a good state, we can go ahead and write our JavaScript code. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our time element 
And we're going to do that by using document.getElementById. And we're going to find it by that ID of time. Now, the fun part, we're going to go ahead and create our event source. So, and create a variable called time event source. That's going to be equal to a new event source. The event source will take in the URL of the event stream. So, we're going to give it localhost 3009 slash current time. To receive messages from our event source, we're going to use event source.onMessage. That's going to take an arrow function. Then we're going to pass our event in. Then we can go ahead and take our time element and set the inner text to our event.data. We'll then go ahead and save the file. And you can see it's updating our h1 over here with the time every one second. To better understand our event object over here, we're going to go ahead and console log the event. We'll go ahead and we'll inspect and we'll jump to the console tab. We're going to expand one of the event objects that's printed out over here. Now, as I mentioned, there's the data. That's where we get the time from. This could also be a JSON object if you want it. Now, another important piece of information is the type. The type is message by default if you don't specify one. So if we go to our network over here and we click on the current time and go to the event stream we can once again see that type over here and by default as i mentioned the type is message and since there's a type that means we can have different type of messages in the code that we have over here we're listening to the on message event which means we're only listening for messages with the default type of message so instead of using the on message that we have over here, we can go ahead and use a different way to listen to different events. So taking our time event source, we're going to go ahead and add an event listener. And then that event listener is going to listen on message. You can see over here it says on message and now we're listening to message. And we can go ahead and do the exact same code that we were doing. So we can take that time element and put that over here. And and you'll see it's once again updating the time. And now we're going to go ahead and add a second event. We're going to jump back to our server. And within our server, the new event that we're going to add is for colors. For this colors, we're going to go ahead and add a colors array just with various colors within it. Then inside our current time, within our interval that happens every one second, we're going to go ahead and write a brand new type of message. And the way that we do this is inside our message over here, we're going to add event colon and then the type of message. So for us, that's going to be a color. And then we have to add one new line. And then after the new line, we go ahead and add our data. We're going to go ahead and supply our data. And that data is going to be a color. We're going to create a brand new method called random color. After the random color, we'll then supply two new lines, as you can see over here. With our previous event over here that we wrote for the new time, you can see we didn't specify the event up here. And when we don't specify the event, it's going to default to message. We'll quickly create our random colors method, and it will simply look at the colors array and supply a random index. Now that we have our random color, let's go ahead and take a look at our network tab. Inside our network tab, we're going to look at our current time. And when we jump to the event stream, we look under type. And now we're going to see two types, color and message. The color is a random color and the message is our time. Let's jump back to our index.js and we're going to make use of that color event. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take our time event source and we're going to add an event listener for color. And we're going to go ahead and take our time element and call style.color and set it to the event.data. Then we'll go ahead and save that. And now you can see every one second the color is changing to a random color for our time. And the time is also updating every one second based on these two different events that we have. I hope this gives you a really great idea of how you can use server set events to consume a live stream of data and then update your front end of your application. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell.